Somebody else around me is a spy partner. You know, I'm the man. It's in my domain. You know, just trespassing. I want him to quit like he quit, just like he did. Sitting on the stool and me walking away. We're losing your life, we're losing your wife as well. He, uh, he said, that's loss. He, he handled it with dignity. Jay, it's over. Come on, the Jay, second. All right. I stopped the fight. Angelo Dundee the wants to stop the fight. Angelo Dundee wants to stop the fight. When I get big, I'm going to get him for you. By the time Muhammad Ali fought his old sparring partner, Larry Holmes, he was well past his prime days and had no longer the sting of a bee. You ain't knocked nobody out in 67, uh, 76, and you say you gonna knock me out. I ain't never been out. 35 fights in Yeah, I'm gonna knock you out. And you're scared of me. You know you meet your master. I swear to God. You know you meet your master. I swear to God. I'm just knocking you out. Knock me out. You are my sparring partner. Remember that. You are my sparring partner. And you and listen, I'm superior. I'm the world's greatest. By this point, Larry Holmes was already on his seventh title defense and Muhammad just came back from his short-lived retirement. Holmes made sure that he had to put away Ali to start getting the recognition he wanted as the world's heavyweight champion. So after countless rounds of sparring and sharpening each other up, the time had come to do it for real this time, for the grandest prize of them all, the heavyweight championship of the world. I have to get the monkey off my back. This shadow has been following me around for many years. I haven't really got my just dues everywhere I go. People say, Ali, what about Ali? What about Ali? What about Ali? I have to knock this man out for the people who say, well, he knocked the man out, but they're going to say he was old. So what? I'd rather them say he was old than say I was nothing. The returning hero, maybe not this time the conquering hero, Muhammad Ali, the man who hasn't had a good fight for the last five years, not since Manila. The man who hasn't even fought since September 15, 1978. He is 38 years of age now, and he must undertake the task of reproving himself all over again. The man who has held the title an unprecedented three times and seeks to make it a fourth. Incredible. Ali's style was based on reflexes, agility, and speed. With all the rounds he's been through, and father time catching up with him, Ali's shot at ever regaining his old glory days seemed nothing more than a big dream. Calling the splendor of the man, speed of hands and feet, the way it was in 66. Oh, that right hurt Ali when he demolished Cleveland Williams at his positive peak and in 67. When he gave it, oh, he's he's ready to go. This must be stopped. It is a sad way to end. Well, they will not stop it. What's my name, he said to Ernie Terrell, as he clobbered him. Terrell, a tough fighter to beat. He was kind to Zora Foley. All those fights. And now this... The Parkinson's disease, all he had to deal with the rest of his life, had already started to show itself even before the Larry Holmes fight. I haven't fought for more than two years. To have your reflexes and your skills the way once they were. Charles Carter, my sparring partner, 22 years old, 160 pounds, same height as Holmes, I'm faster. Um, Jeff Stutterman, top notch man, 22 years old, 6'2, I'm faster. My, Marty Monroe, world eighth ring heavyweight, 24 years old and faster. You watch, that's why I say you see a miracle. I've had two year rest, two years off, I'm just right. Two years off, take what you say, and I'm gonna whoop home. Now old and ill, it was time for Muhammad Ali to pass the torch on to the next crop of heavyweight fighters and close the door on a storied career. As a 14-year-old Mike Tyson sat down to watch his idol get defeated badly at the theater, 
Mike left the screening stunned at what happened and on the journey back home, no word had been said. The following day, Mike would hear his trainer, Cus D'Amato, shouting at the phone. It was him and Ali speaking. Cus asked Ali how he could let a bum beat up on him like that. So as Mike Tyson was hearing all of this, he went downstairs to see what was going on. As Mike approached Cus D'Amato, Cus would hand over the phone to Mike and he would begin to speak to Ali. Ali told Mike that he took medicine that made him weak and that he was going to be returning to fight Holmes one more time. A sobbing Mike Tyson said that he was sorry for what happened to him and that one day, when he got big, that he would get Holmes for him. I often say to him, you know, I owe you a lot, and he doesn't know what I mean, but I'm going to tell him now what I mean. Because unless, if he weren't here, I probably wouldn't be alive today. The fact that he is here and doing what he's doing, and doing as well as, him, as he's doing, and improving as he has, gives me the motivation and interest to stay alive. Because I believe that a person dies when they no longer wants to live. Nature is a lot brighter, people think. Little by little, we lose our friends that we care about, and little by little, we lose our interest, till finally we say, well, what the devil am I doing around here for? We have no reason to go on. But I have a reason with, with Mike here, and he gives me the motivation. I will stay alive, and I will watch him become a success, because I will not leave until that happens. Because when I leave, he not only will know how to fight, he will not only understand many things, and I know these things, but nevertheless, I have to do my part to keep going as long as I can. And I will do that. And I, you mark my words, I will live to see him become a success. So, as the years went on, and the world had moved on, from the greatest of all time, Muhammad Ali, Tyson would make a career of his own under the tutelage of legendary trainer, Custom Auto. Mike dedicated his life to the sport of boxing and had set the goal of becoming the youngest heavyweight champion of all time. All seemed to be going well until one faithful day, his trainer and father figure, Cus D'Amato, would pass away of old age. Now that all this is happening, and he put in all the effort and all the time and all the misery and heartbreak, he's not around to enjoy it. I used to only be bored part of the time, then I talked to him and he kept me in suspense. Now I'm bored all the time. I have nothing to do. With Cus now gone, it was all on Tyson now to carry out his will of fire of becoming the world's youngest heavyweight champion. Mike was set to face the last opponent of Muhammad Ali, Trevor Burbick, for the WBC heavyweight world title. This is what Mike Tyson has trained his whole life for. This is what Customano and Jimmy Jacobs trained this man for. The greatest fighter that ever lived was Muhammad Ali, and he had just took a humiliating beating by Trevor Burbick, and I was angry, and I was looking for revenge. And I can remember Ali coming to me in the ring, because he was introduced to the ring, and Ali coming to me and said, get him for me. Trevor Burbick! So, as the day came to make history, Mike entered the ring as a man on a mission, aiming to knock Burbick out cold, and claim the world title at the age of just 20 years old. One of the great champions, let's see how long his reign lasts. Mike Tyson, kind of feeling him out here, bravado here, standing toe to toe is not the way. If he doesn't pump that jab in the face, Tyson will come right through him. Tyson with the left, bounces it off the forehead of Trevor, the light left jab. Tyson will be able to get underneath it. Oh, wow! But this is a poor fight plan. Oh, the right hand gets him behind the left ear in round one. Tyson clips him with a light left that time. You get the idea that Mike, as soon as... Oh, the right, right hand. Tyson walking right through. He's flying with the left hook. It's perfect. And Tyson clips him with a left hand. Look at this. Combination. And perfect ready to go. But he stays on his feet. Another right hand clips him. He can't take shots like this very long. Wow, with the right hand is Mike. Again, he's won. Tyson knows that he can score at will now. Burbick doing nothing like he did against Piglin Thomas. Fighting in the wrong position. Not using the jab of the bell ends. Round one. A good round one for Mike Tyson. The corner. 
ready to go. Make no mistake, Tyson is in command. This may not go very long because he's got tremendous confidence now. Perfect. This is round two. The WBC Heavyweight Championship of the World. Trevor Perfect and Mike Tyson. Tyson goes to work right away, and he gets Trevor in trouble, and he's down. He'll have to take this to continue. Here comes Tyson again. He knows he can hurt him anytime. Left hook, right hand. But at least Tyson has him under control. Left hook, right. Watch for the uppercut. There it is. Didn't land, but uh, he has the idea. Wow, with the right hand is Mike. Mike's the harder. Crush the right side of the rib cage. Said he goes to the body downstairs. Catches him with the right hand. Upstairs. Two plate champions of all time. Bangs the body. Wow, with that uppercut is Tyson. Catches him with the right left hook. And he goes down. Mike ended up stopping Burbick in just two rounds. And now, after all the years of hard work with Cus, Tyson was now indeed the youngest heavyweight champion of all time, accomplishing the goal Cus and him had set out for themselves. Here we go. The winner by a TKO and youngest and new WBC heavyweight champion of the world, Michael Tyson. Mike Tyson, 20 years old, a heavyweight champion. How does it feel to be wearing this belt? Well, it's the moment I waited for all my life since I started the game of boxing. I was coming to destroy and win the heavyweight championship of the world, which I'd done. And I'd like to dedicate my fight to my great guardian, Custom Motto. And I'm, I'm sure he's up there and he's looking and he's talking to all the great fighters and saying his boy did it. And smiling, that's right. He just made it. That was the destiny. No matter whatever happened. And he um, discussed times that he wasn't feeling well and he doesn't think he's going to be around. They said, no matter what, the job must go on. Muhammad Ali is no question about Muhammad Ali anymore. There are no more Muhammad Ali. There's only one, Larry Holmes. Muhammad Ali has seen the bright side, now he's on the dark side. I just see a, a guy that with class in there tonight. I seen a guy that throws elbows. I seen a guy that throws butts. I seen a guy that hits after the bell. I seen all of this in Mike Tyson. I didn't see a gentleman in there. If they want to make him out of a beast that he's claimed to be, he's going to be in there with a beast. Now that Tyson had kept one promise he made, which was becoming the champion, there was still one more promise he had to live up to, which was to avenge Muhammad Ali's defeat at the hands of Larry Holmes. By this point, Holmes was 8 years older and out of his prime years, just like Ali was. So when fight night came around and the two fighters were standing across from one another, there was a familiar face in the crowd. That face was the face of Muhammad Ali. Before the fight was about to begin, Ali went to Holmes' corner and wished him good luck. He then turned around and walked towards Tyson and told him to go get him for me.
Mike destroyed Holmes in just two rounds. And with this, Mike Tyson took revenge for Muhammad Ali's last two defeats. And so, the Tyson era began. And it was an era that will never be forgotten.